Welcome back to Chip Eye Fishing. Myself, Mr. Anthony, we're weighing in championship tournament. Oh, it looks like a campground set up here. Holy smokes has got some barbecue for everybody. That's Bobby A. <laughs> no, sir. I'm, I need to be more selective. <laughs> I got a big old bullhead. Alright, give me a we had a mud cat bullhead where you were You got a big one on the way? Oh, maybe. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Hit my phone right now. One, two, three, four, yeah, seven. Eight seventy six. Eight seventy six. This way, a big one. Maybe this one. Yeah, we ain't put them in there. There you go, Chip. That one. This one or that one. One thirty five. Alright, y'all get a couple pictures over there now. Alright. Be over there. Watch the fire. Watch the fire ramp right over there. Hey guys, y'all let them get through right there. Sure. <laughs> Hold it, Jim. Got the way blocked. Yeah, you and the fire ramp. Me and the fire, yeah, that's right. There you go. Grab one of these. Huh? Where, where, where? Back here. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Long day, tired. Yeah, that felt pretty good. Well, that sun was coming out. I'm not ready for a Good shot. That's really good. I did have a rain, but that's y'all get a picture over there. The young lady with the camera. We don't see each other. 137. All right, give me six more. One, two, three. Protect themselves. <laughs> they protect themselves. 
All right, over here on the wood sign. Hey, you can see. Got it. There you go. You want your jacket? No, I'll just take this real quick. Hang on, let me pull it off. Make careful you can get you. Bobby A, any words of wisdom before you weigh in? Nope, words of wisdom. Learn the live scope. Yeah, right. All right, lay him in there. That's my big Ladies one. and gentlemen, Bobby R. Nail. 142. One, two, three. Four. Five. They hard to catch, ain't they? I'm telling you. I don't like lugging them. I get too old to lug stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Ain't gonna be that bad. Five, sixty-four. Oh well. Good job, Bobby. Hey. I'll take it. Hey, man. Oh, wow. Hey, get a couple pictures over there. All right. Catch any bass? I oh. caught. I caught a lot. Of, I caught a lot of crappie and a lot of catfish. Everybody. Everybody handle. Grab a couple out and get a picture. All right. <laughs> I think they were giants today. Yeah. It's what it is. Here's a clip of Scott over here. Yeah. From All right. Clayton, look at him. Now you. Gone? <laughs> All right, let me see you big one. Thank you. Pretty fish. 167. All right, give me six, six more. <laughs> Any live fish that's two, three, four, five. Pretty catch. Six, seven. That's right there. That's a good shot. Eight nine seven. All right, y'all get a couple of them. Gonna pull my buggy. Just go and drink with. Whatever. Grab it. Right. Yeah. 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 The problem is bait fish. Bait fish. <laughs> 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 yeah, in their head first. How'd y'all do? Oh, you <laughs> 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 That would be. We didn't care about seeing fish. The next presentation at the right there. Let them figure it out. Yep. Yep. Goodies. Big guy, crappy man. Hey, there, Tony. You ready for a sandwich? Yes, sir. You went close while you were saying. Yeah. How we do? The barbecue is the best thing you've There we go. Sounds like a good catch to me. Hardware, software, heavy sticks. Ready for a sandwich? Appreciate you, Hey, how are you doing today? Well, couldn't be much better. It was a fun day. Did you get rained on? Very in a little bit, you. No, we, just right the last, last hour we had some, and then we ran towards it. <laughs> right. It wasn't bad. Rain more on the way. Good, Harry. 
you have to show them boys? You're Sharon Harris, right? Yeah. yeah. You fish with Anthony? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah right. It was all those tips I gave him on. There you go. I'll get that. Well, you know what? I think you got it. I know. I didn't want to embarrass him again. Well, I'm gonna go take the tour before I get my plate. Get over here. One of us should break the camera. <laughs> well, Mama said, "Don't go around hungry. Just go around." So. That's right, get you some more, man. That food's good. How's that burger? <laughs> good. <laughs> they already ate one box. I was already one box. That's what the chocolate chip. Good eats right there. Yes, folks. Holy Smokes Barbecue. <laughs> Building it up nice. There we go. Got some sweet sauce. We got some vinegar sauce. We got some, we got some pork belly burn ends over there. Oh, man. And cookies and drinks and chips. This is awesome. Thank you very much. I got so much other. It's not including today. Kevin Stacy and Cal Deviac. Let's give him a hand, guys. Second place was Anthony Blandon and Chip Corbin with 62 eight. Good. Third place was Jason Evans and Brent McDonald and then they've added the lucky charm here in the last couple of weeks. Yes, they have. 57 5 30. Good, good catch. And then fourth was Evan Matusevich and Marcus Mustin. With 44, 7, 50. Good job. And then Andy Dick, who fished with several parts. Andy, Michael Pruitt, Jonathan Wilson. I think Andy would get the most of it. 44, 20. And then the, shot, then, the, then the shallow water shot shooters of Matthew King, Rick Vandermeer, Charles Brown, and Gate Grady Brown. Had 43, 920. And then seventh was Tony Aclair and Jim Cobb. And then eighth, of course, was the big eye crab. <laughs> With about five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> My fishing time is dwindling. Uh, 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 uh. You have other duties. <laughs> I have other duties now. This, this by here. So he is. That ain't, that's not a that's not a myth. That's not a lie. Jesus said, when I come back, this world's gonna be like it was in the days of Noah. What was it like in the days of Noah? It was wicked. Very wicked. Have you seen anything wicked lately? <laughs> huh? You seen anything wicked? It's getting pretty wicked, isn't it? In, listen to this. In those days, people enjoyed banquets, parties, weddings, right up to the time, right up to the time Noah entered into the ark. So the day Noah walked into that ark, people were having a wedding. There was a family having a wedding. Noah walked in the ark, people were having a wedding. Within 24 hours, everybody on the earth was dead. Right up until that time, people were having banquets, weddings, feasts, doing all this wicked stuff right up to that time. This is the most wisdom you'll ever going to hear right there. Jesus Christ is saying, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when I come back. We could be out here fishing one day, and you hear, you hear a clap of thunder, next thing you know, that sky rolls back like a scroll. And it ain't gonna matter about nothing else except for what Jesus Christ has done for you. you know, whether you accepted that gift or not. Because everything that is not attached to him is gonna die. He told you that with Noah. Every single thing 
It did not go on that ark. Everything that is not in Christ Jesus is going to die. For a Christian, that's the greatest thing. We look forward to that, man. We look up and thank God for that. Lord, thank you for allowing us to have the opportunity to be saved. Because don't you reckon when everything started getting bad, those people started climbing on that ark? Don't you reckon? They were trying to get on that thing. I want to get in. I want to get on this. This is bad. But you know who closed the door of the ark? Nobody get one. When he closes the door, that's it. We got to remember that. We want our whole family to be there with us when that happens. That's so. That's the greatest wisdom you're going to ever hear in your as, as, as this generation. You guys, fishermen, sitting right here right now is when I come back. It's going to be bad in this world, and people are going to be like ain't like tomorrow's going. The sun's going to come up tomorrow. We are so close to that. There's nothing left. There is nothing left in the Bible, prophetic-wise, that has to happen for Jesus Christ to come back. He's ready to come back. All that has to happen is His Father says, Who get you there? That's all that's left. Where are you at? Where are you at? All of us, man. Me, my family, you, children, grandchildren, Wives, where are you at with that? Do you believe that? Man, I hope so. That's the most, that's the greatest thing you can ever do. You know, look, these big old crappies, that old 424 ain't gonna mean a hill of beans when I stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. of you have fished every single tournament? Who, who, who's fished every single tournament? Raise your hand. Man, that's awesome. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, you can about that guy. You've heard some, a lot of wisdom read to you out of, out of God's Word. I don't know what you do with it, but I know this. His Word does not come back void. When you hear it, it goes into your mind, it goes into your being, and it's there. And God, He will use that someday in your life. It could be this weekend. It could be the day you draw your final breath upon this earth. But He's going to use it. It could be after you've drawn your final breath, and you're standing before him, and he says, You heard the word. You heard it. Well, I raised up a man that was as good as dead. And I had him with me. So, think about that. God's word does not come back void one day. You will stand before him and he will hold you accountable to that word what you heard. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures from you. We'll talk just briefly. And this comes out of Ephesians 2 in the Bible. It says, God saved you by his grace. When you believe. When you believe in God, He saved you. You can't take credit for it. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for good things we have done. So none of us can boast about being good. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created a new Christ in us, a new Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things He has planned for us long ago. Listen to that. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we Thank can do somebody. the good things He planned for us ticket. long ago. When He saves you, 
He's got plans for you. That's things he wants you to do. It could be visiting somebody in the hospital that's sick. Giving somebody something when they're poor and they don't have anything. God has things planned for you to do. That's not going to get you into heaven, though. That grace that God gives you is free. All you have to do is believe. It is a free gift. Salvation is not a reward. It is not a reward. It is a gift from God. You need to, you need to, you need to remember that. So, if we don't do good, if, if we don't do good, how do we know that our how do we know that our faith is good? If Chester says, Rod, right, I'm a Christian. How am I going to know Chester's a Christian? How am I going to know Chester believes in God? How am I going to know that? Listen to this. James, James 2, 26. Listen, I'm going to start at verse 23. And so it happened, just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteousness because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Rahab the prostitute is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions. When she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Just as the body is dead without breath in it, so also is faith dead without good works. You can't say you believe in God, that you're a Christian, you believe in Jesus Christ, and go out and act and talk a certain way. You cannot do that. It's not good. It's... Your faith is dead. All it is is little words coming out of your mouth. If what you do with your life doesn't represent what you say with your mouth. You need to remember that. Now, what is, an, what is a great example of that? I want to read this example from Hebrews. Hebrews 11, starting in verse 7. It says, <coughs> a great example of, of having faith and doing something with it. Showing that you believe in God. Listen to this. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God who warned him. Who warned him about things that had never happened before on earth. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world. He received the righteousness that comes by faith. God told Abraham, God told Noah, he said, Noah, I'm going to destroy the world. It's become so wicked. The world has become so wicked, I'm getting ready to destroy it. <coughs> I don't know if you know that or not. He's already said that again. And that time's coming again. Noah, for a hundred years, built this boat for a hundred years. Could you imagine what people thought of him building a boat in the middle of the woods? God told him, Abraham, I'm going to destroy this world. Abraham said, he said, build a boat. I want you to build this ark, this long, this long, this wide, this tall. This is what I want it to be. Noah went to work. It never rained. It never rained. That, it, you, you, we just heard God told Abraham God told Noah he was getting ready to do something that the earth had never seen before things that had never happened and then Noah went to work people laughed at Noah probably thought he was crazy just like they do right now in today's time with anybody that uses the word or the name Jesus you can use any other name you want in this country, but you cannot go around. It's getting so bad. 
You cannot go around talking in the name of Jesus in this world much anymore. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. <clears throat> Noah build it all. I want you to build his boat because I'm going to destroy this world. And Noah went to work. He says, Jimmy, I'm going to destroy this world. Do you believe that? Tony, Evan, Joey, Cal, Chester, Because if you do, you're going to start building the boat. Now that ain't the boat that you that Noah built. It's a boat of, that you're going to put your family in. And you're going to take them with you when that time comes. Just like Noah did. They were the only eight people left upon this earth. You are from his lineage. You, every single one of us. There was no other people upon this earth but that family. You were part of it. Because he believed and he worked on that boat, you came forth as it. But he's asking us, and we talked about this at one of the other tournaments. Remember the blind man? Remember the blind man where he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? And the blind man said, Who is it that I might believe? And Jesus said, You're looking at it. <laughs> and the man said, I believe. See, he was blind. And now he could be truly saved. Because he saw the Savior of the world standing in front of him. And that's what he wants us to see. He wants every one of us to see him for who he is. That he, Jesus Christ was God come down here to show you what he was like. He's not what a lot of people think he is. He is exactly like Jesus. But God is holy. He is holy. And he's going to hold everything that's not holy accountable. He's going to punish it. Jesus took all that punishment for you. All you got to say is, I want that gift. I want that gift. All you got to do is humble yourself and say, I want that gift. Only pride is going to keep that, keep you from doing that. I'm going to read one more scripture. Luke 17. This is funny how people think people think Noah was a myth. There's no way this world world was destroyed by water. Go out west to Arizona in those places and look at how the water worked on those mountains. Seashells in places. There's seashells at every exit. Every exit going through Arizona. That's right. Listen to this. This is Jesus talking. When the Son of Man returns, it will be like the days of Noah. When I come back, it's going to be like the days of Noah. So, he believes in Noah. <laughs> He knows who knows. First place today. You know, back in Vietnam, there was a sniper. And he got shot. By a new sniper. <laughs> <laughs> he was a small in statue. Big in heart. Got a good scope, zeroed in all the windage, all the elevation. Pull the trigger today. <laughs> Pull the trigger. Boom. First place, 13.24 pounds. Wow. 
with the 2.21, <coughs> Mr. Evan Matusevich. First place today, $600. Congratulations. I'm going to let you hold both these plaques. Because <laughs> you earned them. All right. That boy right there, he's double trouble. <laughs> Congratulations on the big eye crack. You're going to pay your part you got Hmm. If you want these plastic bags, or yeah, trails, we got them right here. Save these. All right, guys, what a great tournament today, and, and I can tell you, we got a great we got a great member of our outdoor ministry. This right here is Ridgecrest Outdoor Ministry. We reach out to hunting and fishermen, tell them about the name of Jesus Christ. That's what we do, and we got so many people that are involved with that. And we've got an event coming up in, in June where we have all these kids come and we and we uh, have them fish. They, they shoot the bow. We even got a 22 guy coming this year with live 22. We got all kinds of stuff that these kids do. I mean, you just wouldn't believe their eyes, man. When they some of them have never fished in their life. Some of them come from the inner city, have never seen the ocean have never seen the water, have never seen a fish in person. And it's amazing. We may have something that falls one day coming up so to where we, we've done it before where we get you, we, 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 you come, you pay $25, and what we do is we, we pay that money back to you, but we take all those fish and we take them all and we put them in our pond. So be looking out for that if we do that this year. Catfish, it don't matter. What we do is, we weigh all your fish, it don't matter what brand they are. <laughs> Catfish, brim, white perch, you name it. My man's three pound catfish might win. <laughs> <laughs> Chippo. I dream of that old Chippo. Right? <laughs> Every time I see that, you know, it's that called a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Amy. Ridgecrest Outdoor Ministries. And one of our guys is Jeff Darkner. Man, thank Jeff for this great Hello, food. Jeff. Hold the smoke. Hold the smoke barbecue. So, hand me that thing right there. <clears throat> so, Jeff's giving away. What, what are we giving away here? $50. $50 gift card. You could eat $50, boy, with a barbecue. <laughs> Hey, that's, that's some of the best barbecue I've eaten, man. I'm going to tell you what. That's good. Now look, I ate three or four packs of M&M's out there today, bone. That was still good. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you look at a broad tip, but you got to have something in the mouth. <laughs> that thing's a... <laughs> right, Holy Smoke Barbecue, $50 gift certificate. Three ninety nine for the last three on there. Who's got three ninety nine? Uh oh. All right. All right. <laughs> look, he might deliver that to you. I'll definitely deliver that. Hold it up. Yeah. 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 Get over here. Get the Jeff over there. Get a picture of the Jeff. Tires, man. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. We're doing it right now. Okay, so the Bobby A, where is that rod and reel at? Okay. Somebody hand me that rod and reel up there. I got it. On the this is for the lowest weight today. I don't know if they're still here or not. I'm just glad to know it ain't with me. <laughs> Bobby A is donating this right here. Oh, watch out. <laughs> Pretty work, Bobby. <laughs> ready to pitch, isn't it? Ooh, there's a right hand grip hand. on that thing, bro. <coughs> ACC crappy strip. The winner of this here for the lowest weight today 
was the and this, we could just double this up as being because I'm gonna tell you Bobby A is a hard charger. Wouldn't you say he is? Oh yeah. Hard charger. So we're gonna make this the lowest weight slash the hard charger award. And these guys, they the hard chargers, bro. Brian Tomlin and Jason Murphy. Where are you guys at? Come on up here. Hey. Hey, next year you might be on top. Look at that, bro. Man, that's beautiful thing right there. Thanks, Bobby. Yes, sir. Is it two piece? three. <laughs> <laughs> One of you can run in front of the car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. We got all the plaques is gone, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right, let me have this let me have the big uh bait thing right here. Alright. Let me make sure I ain't putting nothing in there that needs to come out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright. An eagle live bait cooler. Who needs one of these things? Who who uses them? Winner today of that last three on the ticket, three ninety one. <laughs> <Three ninety one. laughs> Woo! Hey, what's up, 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 what's how many people have one of these scales already? Wait, has your whole krill on there? Come on. I think that's pretty cool. I don't even have one of these. But that thing's like $40. I'll take that back. $69.99. But Bobcat gave us that thing for about $40. How awesome is that? And you go up there and tell Bobcat, when you, if you ever go up there, Go tell him you with the Rick. Tell him you with Big Eye Crappy Man series, and thank him for donating some of the stuff that he did. To Man, he's awesome. He didn't donate the whole thing, but he donated a percentage of it to help us out. Bobcat's been a friend of mine for a long time. The winner of this is last three, 385. Who is 385? Right there. Good, Phil. Power bubbles, yeah. I've got I keep two of these on my boat. I use them all the time. My live well, the only thing I have in my life lake water comes into my live well. The pumps on that boat do not work anymore. The water comes in naturally. And all I have is this thing right here. And my fish will beat that box to death in there. And all I'm doing is putting this on it in the lake water. That's a good little thing right there. Just don't get it yet. Unless they've made up great job. Last three, three nine zero. Three nine zero. Tony. All right. Yes, sir, that's a great gift right there, guys. Great gift. All right. <laughs> All right. Down there, on that sign down there, it says B and M. Now Andy Dick one year called B and M and talked to them and told us about the Big Eye Crappin' Man series. And that guy sent us a few things that we gave away that year and he gave us that sign. I don't use anything but B and M. I have a 16 foot B and M jeep. All the poles, all the poles in my boat are B and M jeep poles. And I can tell you, I would not have caught that big crappie I caught that year if I had not had one because it was so limber. Because that fish was so strong and my drag was so tight that that rod tip gave exactly what needed to be given to him in order for me to catch it. Sometimes it fails on a hook strike, I mean a hook set or something because of its limberness. But I, I love these poles and they're great poles. I've had them ever since I've been crappie fishing since like 1987, just maybe a different series of them. 389 is the last three. 
Bobby A for that right there. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. Appreciate it, brother. Awesome giving it. these prizes. Nah. I know you love catfish. That's a catfish. No. For sure. Who's fishing Bobcat's thing? Who's fishing Bobcat? I mean, the, the uh, big thing <coughs> that Bobcat's next weekend. Well, it's not Bobcat, it's just a crappy thing, right? Mr. Crappy. Mr. Crappy. Mr. Crappy. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Crappy. That's a duck shooter. <laughs> he laughed at it. He laughed at it. Fire. Remember this morning when I was telling you about that time that somehow diesel fuel was put in my boat and it blew a smoke ring and the glass master was running through the smoke ring like it was a circus or something? <laughs> he didn't stop and help me. All those fish, it was in May, and every one of those fish came off a dock. Not one dock, but every single dock in Bluestone Creek. And I'm going to give this to a daddy over here that became a daddy here recently. I'm going to give it to old Scott Clifton right there, buddy Rose. All right. Thank you, Congratulations. Sir. Thank you. You got a little man. <laughs> yes, sir. Right. Got a little pole. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Right, you can go up north and use that on the ice, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mr. Crap. Mm -hmm. Mr. Crap. I know I tell a lot of stories. <laughs> but that day, that day, with the smoke rain in the docks, in May at Kerr Lake, we had one of these poles right here. Except it was a BM. And it was 16 foot long. And we had about this much line hanging off at the end of that pole. We would pull our boat up next to that dock. We would stick the whole pole under the dock <laughs> and move it around under the dock. You feel, <laughs> and you just say, Bag it out, bag it out. You bag it out, nip the fish. Believe it or not, with them old B&M poles, this is no lie. This is no lie. I'm laying down on one side of the boat with my pole stuck under the dock. Shay Garrett had his pole stuck under the dock over there. He said, I got one. I dropped my pole in the water and let it float. I went over there and netted his fish. And my pole started swimming off. <laughs> I ran back over there, picked my pole up, set the hook, and we never had another fish. <laughs> that was an awesome day. Those fish love those docks up there right now. Right now. That is wisdom. Mm -hmm. 407. 407. All right, Jason. All right, a Denali. That's a high dollar fold right there. 18, isn't it? I think it's an 18. Bobcat. Bobcat. 
Thank you. 380. 380. Go ahead. Joe, I know you see old Bobcat all the time. Yes, I will. You tell him you won one in Poland. I will. I tell him you appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't forget to do that. I sure will. I don't know if you guys know it or not, but that one of Bobcat's buddies, and I've known him for a long time, too. Up there, if you hang around up there at all, Jack Penny died this week. Mm -hmm. Jack Penny was a great sportsman in North Carolina, but he passed away. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yeah. Last three on this dimension. Okay. Last three. Last three. Last three. Last three. Old Chester been around a long time. He was fishing this series before he even had Bruce right there. Look at that big Bruce. <laughs> That's what I said. I said, that ain't the same boy from Look, I got a picture of Bruce right here. Bruce be standing right here. Old Pop be over here and Bruce and Chester. I remember me and Drew was over there in Bush Creek one day, so he was like, Drew don't even breathe. He'll be fishing and he'll be quiet. Don't make no noise. Don't do nothing with the boat. Next thing I know, it sounded like World War III. Chester was coming down the rocks over there with a canoe. <laughs> <laughs> and they caught fish. They won a lot of tournaments. All right. Mr. Crappy. Crappy. <coughs> Them boys love the fish. Back then. Yeah. They love the fish. The canoe. That's, what, that's what that tells you. 383. 383. That's a shallow water shot shooting oh, pole yeah. right there now. Appreciate it. Congratulations. Alright, what we got next? Let's give away another steel. Maybe one day somebody will give me <laughs> Three eighty one. Three eighty one. Good, y'all. He said, "I ain't never won anything." <laughs> <laughs> Let me see that picture. Three eighty one. Sorry, you may break yours, bro. All right. This B and M right here donated by Bobby A. This is one of them, this is like a long line one here now. Great, great long line pole right here. Thank you, Bobby A. 397. 397. Good Lord. Good Lord telling you you need to start long line. We talked about it long enough. All right. Another denial. Bobby A. The long line pole right here. Can y'all talk junk about Bobby A? Because <laughs> 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 he likes it so much. <laughs> 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 Three ninety seven. Three ninety seven. Three ninety seven. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. This is the last one, isn't it? Let me go get that one. Mm -hmm. All right. A slab. Another Bobby A. Right here, slab shaker. Mr. Crappy. Another long liner right there. 405. 405. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We <laughs> brought it up last year. Congratulations. All right, and here's the here's the grand prize today. Let's see what this is. It's an X13. Oh, Jinko fishing. That's a good one. X13. That's a good pole. That's a two hundred dollar pole right there. Ooh. That's a two hundred dollar pole. It's a live scoop pole right there. My bobcat says, 
the man who wins that, he's going to learn how to lie because he's going to have the right weapon to get it done. With. This is the last prize. But the first one I see run off without helping me get a tent down, I'm going to shoot him in the <laughs> 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 Ain't that right? We got us a 22 somewhere. Don't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, who's gonna be the lucky winner for this thing? That's like going to war. That's like Moses with the shaft. Sniper <laughs> rifle. Sniper rifle. Right there. Is it gonna be Chippo? <laughs> How Anthony would just man, it'd be like. <laughs> Giving the greatest sniper the greatest weapon. <laughs> <laughs> he would with this. Lord, thank you for this great pole right here. Thank you for our friendship with old Bobcat. Man, we love it. Number 402. Yeah. All right. All right. Woo! Oh, <laughs> Congratulations. You know, Congratulations. You know, a long time ago, we had a banquet at our church. And we had great fishermen sportsmen. We've had all the Phil Robertson size, Roland Martin, Jimmy Houston. We had a guy named Clay Dyer that had no arms and no legs and is a professional bass fisherman. If you've never met him, you've never watched him, he is awesome. But at one of those events, old Chester and his daddy <coughs> prayed to receive Jesus Christ and were baptized not long after that. All right. That's what it's all about. That's why we do what we do. Man, because one day there's going to be a shout. There's going to be a trumpet blast. And you, and you could be standing at the Walmart. You could be talking to Bobcat. And if you ain't a Christian, Bobcat's going to disappear just like that. And you're going to say, where'd Bobcat go? Because Bobcat, he, he, he has faith with works. His faith is not dead. He believes in God. And he does. That's the way we need to be. Bobcat always, what's his greatest statement? Yes is a yes, and my no is a no. My yes is a yes, and my no is a no. I'm take it to the bank. Bless the Lord. That's the way he talks. And you want to say yes to him. Let's pray so we can get on out of here. Father, thank you. Bless Christ. Come up here, you guys. I can get a picture with you. Pretty work, pretty work. Boys caught some fish every time. All right, big fish of the year. Uh -oh. Now, normally this is very special to the big eye crab in there. Because it takes it to heart when somebody catches a bigger fish than he does. <laughs> no, I love to see you guys catch big fish. <coughs> I remember that day very well. It was old, I went by old Cal Deviat and Kevin Stacy out there, and old Cal said, Man, I got one for you today. <laughs> <laughs> I got the big fish today, boy. It ain't no problem. I got that. <laughs> he come up there, boy, with his chest all poked out and laid that 282 on the sail. I said, Boy, that's pretty. And right behind him was a man with a 292. <laughs> That was a crazy day. Yeah. Well, he he caught the big one. He caught the big one. So in here is a hundred ones. <laughs> <laughs> All them ones that y'all bring me, like I'm the 
guarantee state bank will fix it. I'll give them back. Don't go to that place. Get up here, Tony. <laughs> Tony, Tony, I call him Jim Cobb. Jim Cobb called that big <laughs> There's actually 105 or something like that. I'm going to hear him bless you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank you. Congratulations, guys. Man, what an awesome kick. No, you can't have that. Girl. He said you can't have it. Yeah, you can have it. I just took it out for the picture. <laughs> All right, so what, what we like? Has anybody got a, a ticket though? Yeah, everybody get an orange ticket. Yep. If you fish, if you fish today, you got an orange ticket. If you did not, let me know now. <laughs> All right. All right, we ain't gonna call it. Not yet. <laughs> All right, so the big okay. fish today. The big fish today. <laughs> Is worth three hundred and fifty dollars. Now I was told old Chippo was gonna bring me a three pounder. Catfish. <laughs> <laughs> he did not tell who what what kind of fish it was gonna be. But the big fish today. Big fish today was a 2.1, 2.21. So a two and a quarter pound big old black crappie. Beautiful. Thick old fish. <coughs> Caught by a new rising star here in the Big Eye Captain Man series. And I watched him a little bit today. Took some pictures of him. He can catch him. He can catch him. 2.21 pounds, Mr. Evan Matusevich. Come on, Evan. Let me get a picture. Now, you can give your... Well, you can't really give him one because you got two plaques. Here, hold this plaque. You can have two of them and you can give him one if you... Here, here. Come on, Evan. Here. $350. Alright, here's the other play. You go in there shout and tell them you ain't won $100 for that. He's your friend. He'll hit that hurt. He'll help. Alright, here's the other play. Alright, here's the other Fifth place today. What do we do? Now, we didn't have enough teams to pay five places. So, what do we do if we pay the, the last place? What's the last place? Entry fee. Entry what was the entry fee today? $75. $75. Fifth place. And look at that. The Lord blessed me. Well, he's blessed all day long, son. Every day. Fifth place with 9.41 pounds. Mr. Jason Evans, Brent McDonald, and Megan McDonald. Hello, Lucky Charm. Yeah. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Now I don't have the two little two plaques. Now I don't have three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he doesn't need that. I'm going to say. 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 i <laughs> all right, congratulations, guys. All right, fourth place. So edging out. So fourth place today with 9.42 pounds. 
Yeah, that's right. This is 9.42 pounds. Fifth place was 9.41. This is 9.42. I got you. I got you. I was, I was close. Yeah, it was yeah. real close. <laughs> now, I used to have a scale that went all the way up to three digits, but that one doesn't work anymore. So, all I could find was a two digit scale. But, and that can be hard sometimes. Mm. But with 9.42 pounds, just edging out probably the most blessed team in the series because they're consistent, they're very consistent as well, was the shallow water sharpshooters. Hmm. Matthew King, Grady Brown, and Charles Brown. Fourth place. And they win $140. You can get you something for that, can't you? Hey, order that money, we'll get it in the flat. Excuse me. Third place. And I was thinking they were going to whip y'all boys today. <laughs> the long line magicians. The long line magicians of Jimmy Perry and Jeff Williford with a great catch of 10.36. 10.36 pounds. And they went to Harris Lake. Long line at Harris. Good job, guys. The third third place today was two hundred and forty dollars. Buy a lot of money for that if you can find it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> third place. Nope. Yes, sir. Congratulations, guys. Okay, second place. Come on, hurry up. Let's go. Come on, black man. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing good, bud. <laughs> all right, that's good when you got some good health. You're just you're blessed. If you got good health, it makes all the difference in the world. This is a great sack of fish right here. And, and, uh, and they were the favorites coming in here to win this thing. Them and Jimmy Perry. Second and third. Second and third. Second place with 11.53 pounds. 11.53 pounds today. And they was in my view today. <laughs> I was watching people today now. Got some pictures. I'm going to show them a picture of them from they don't think I was watching. <laughs> I was like behind a point looking through the tree. <laughs> <laughs> they don't osprey you out there. Yeah. See they a bit of tree. <laughs> Seven fish, 11.53 pounds. They had a 2.06 pound big fish. <coughs> Man, the snipers. Kevin Stacy and Kyle DBI. Good job, guys. <laughs> Second place today, three hundred dollars. Good job. All right. Man, what an awesome day. And they know how to hide their fish too, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you know when I, I call them a sniper because when you're a sniper in the military. You don't carry that thing around with your scope where everybody sees it because you will become the first target of everybody. So you know, a sniper carries his weapon down his leg, tucks it under his arm, and the thing comes up the back, right here and you hold it just like this. You got the sling swivel in your hand and that barrel runs down your leg. Nobody knows uh, has any idea what you're carrying. And that's the way them boys are. They're tough. They're sharp. They zero in there. They make the cue. Tough. I love to watch them. I have many times out there. 